All right, today I'm going to show you how this new drop game works. So hopefully you have this sitting in front of you right now. It's the drop game uh, packet. I'm going to come back to that in a second, but first I want to show you how this program actually runs. So if I hit play in Eclipse right now, there's the drop game. And we've got a board of numbers up at the top. This little arrow shows me what column I'm under right now. So I'm at player column is two, so that's counting zero, one, two. Currently I have zero points, I've got 10 turns left, that's what you always start with. My goal is to get as many points as possible. I can move, press one to move left, I can press two to stay where I am and grab that 200, or I can press three to move to the right. Now 500 is the highest, so I'm gonna press three, and now I'm over here. So my column now is at space zero, one, two, three. I just earned those 500 points that I grabbed by going to that right column. My turns went down by one. I've only got nine turns left now. And if you notice, if you look at the table, the matrix here, these two rows from the original one shifted down. Now they're right here. And a new row replaced the top row. So the rows are going to continually keep shifting down. Next off, it looks like if I go to the left, I can get 300 points. So I'm going to hit 1 to go there. Now that added to my 500 from before, so now I'm up to 800. Got 8 turns left. Um, that 500 looks good for me, so I'm going to go 1 to move to the left. I'm going to stay right where I am, so I'm going to hit 2 and stay where I am. And it's not great options. Let's go to the right to grab that 300. Okay, so now I have a couple of choices. I can grab this 300, or I can go over here. Over here, there's three stars. What that's going to do is give me three extra turns. So that'll help me get more points in the long run, I think. So I'm going to move to the left. I'm going to hit one. It says player earned three more turns. Now, if you look before, I had five turns left. Now I've got seven. It said I earned three turns, and I did, but I used one of them so really, I went down to four turns, then gained three more and got to seven. So if I wanted to gain three turns again, I could stay right where I was. Now I'm up to nine turns again. And I'm just going to stay put for a while just so we can end this out, get my turns down. Once I get down to zero turns, game over, it tells me my total score, 4,800 points. And one other thing I should show you. If I get to the edge, so here's a new game. I'm going to go to the left, go to the left Jason again. Jason Moss, if you're in the building, your ride is waiting for you at the back entrance. Jalen Moss, please report to the back of the building. Your ride is here. All right, so if you're Jalen Moss, you should go take your ride right now. That's what the announcements just said. Anyways, now that I'm right here, I'm at the edge. This is 400. What do you think would happen if I would say move to the left? Well, there's options, but what I have mine setting up to doing, we could just say error, you can't move to the left, that'd be fine. You could stay right where you are, maybe you just can't go further anymore. What I do, if I try to move left, it loops me right around. So I went to the other edge, and that's how I would say move left. So similarly, if I move right, right now, it's going to loop me back around to the other side. You can decide if you want to do that looping thing, or if you want to print out an error message if it goes out of bounds, but it's up to you. All right, so anyways, that's how the game works. Let's go back to this sheet, see what you have to do. So this is a little bit different than the other programs we've done in that you're not going to write a hierarchy chart. The code is already somewhat written for you, and all you need to do is fill in the missing pieces. So the overview, you can read through that if you want. It just tells you basically what the game does. We're going to be using a matrix to do it. So the game board will store integer values in a two-dimensional array. Just reading this section. The value stored will be 0 through 500. Catching a zero value will earn the player three additional turns, so the zeros are those stars. Catching one to 500 will earn the player points. Now, zeros should only appear 10% of the time. That's something that you're going to have to work with a little bit. That can be a little tricky. So zeros shouldn't occur with the same frequency that 100 to 500 happen. Technically, I've got six options here. So if I just did regular old math.random, you'd have a one out of six chance of getting a zero, and that's more than 10%. So I'm going to have to do something to figure out how to make it only 10% of the time I get zeros, and then otherwise I get these other values. Uh, values of 100 to 500 should appear the other 90% of the time with equal probability, and instead of printing a zero, we're going to print out those three stars to represent additional turns. So there's my game board. 
And again, it's going to be a matrix. It also prints out the column I'm currently at, how many points I've accumulated, and my turn slots. Now, the last thing is this little guy, this little up arrow. We've got to figure out a way to print that up so it's always under the correct column. The player initially starts under column 2, so I'm right in the middle. Again, this is column 0, 1, 2. It's going to be a small issue to get that to be in the right spot. I'll tell you what I did was a for loop with some spaces, and depending on what column I was at, depending on how many times those spaces printed out. Maybe that'll help you. All right, so how do you get started? This is kind of the first task you have to do. Create a new project called Dropkit. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to switch to like a new workspace so you can see what it would look like from the start. I'm going to create a new project called Drop Game, just like I always do, and I'm also going to create a new package. So the package, you want to call it CS1, because that's how the um, code that you're going to be copying and pasting in is set up for. So we're going to make a new project called Drop Game, and our package is going to be CS1. So if I go right here, I'm going to go New Projects, Java Project, just like usual, call it Drop Game. And everything looks good. Okay, so I'm going to finish that. Now I'm going to go File, New Package. Like I said, just for ease, use CS1. And then we need to have two Java files, Drop Game and Drop Driver. Now you can download these and paste them right onto the package. What I found to be easier is if I go to New Class, make one called Drop Driver. And just hit finish on that, and then make another called, what was it, drop game, I think. Uh, yeah, so drop game, finish on that. You're going to have two empty values. So right now, these are posted on our Google Classroom. So if you go into Google Classroom like you normally go, so go to your mail, mail.google.com, I want to go into the classroom and go to computer science. So there should be an assignment for drop game. When you click on that, if you don't see these right away, come ask me. But these are the files you'll need. Now, initially, you'll only need drop game and drop driver. If you click on drop driver, rather than downloading this, I think it's easier just to copy all this. Then go to Eclipse, go to Drop Driver, delete everything that's in there, and just paste that in. Now we've got Drop Driver. Do the same with Drop Game. So here's Drop Game. I'm going to copy all this. Lots of stuff in here. And we're going to paste that onto Drop Game. Like that. Okay. So now that I've got that is in here, I'm ready to get going. Now you'll notice Drop Game has a lot of stuff already. We've got, it's going to be 3 by 5 the matrix. I've already got a board for my game. It's that size. We've got some variables, player cow, player points, turns left that we're going to be using. But then you'll get to stuff like set up board or print game that's got missing stuff. Now here's where comments are actually helpful to you. Above all of those are comments telling you what that method is supposed to accomplish. For instance, set up board. This is the one I'd probably re uh, recommend starting with. We're going to initialize the board with random values of 0 to 500. 0 should occur no more than 10% of the time, while all other values should appear with equal probability. Players should start in column 2 and have 10 turns remaining. So by the time this is done, my, this board needs to be filled with all values from 0 to 500. Also, the player column needs to start at 2, so we should probably initialize player column to 2, and we should initialize uh, turns left to 10, it looks like. That's all happening in here. And you can read those for all the ones that are missing. For instance, print game prints the contents of the board in the grid format, so we're going to have to print out the values that we set up there. This is also going to print that little up arrow thing representing the location. Let's we'll figure out how to do that. And it prints out the values of the current player points and how many turns are remaining. Values of all other variables don't change at this point. So I don't actually change the board in here. I'm just printing it out. All right. So if I look back here, that's your first step. 
Step one, start by completing setup board and print game. Once you do that, you can run the program and see that the board has been created and printed out properly. Because if you notice, the driver right now is only asking you to print setup board and print game. It's not actually running the game. So you're going to do that first, make sure, and it's kind of a guess and check thing. Since we're not doing a hierarchy chart, maybe the spacing won't be right the first time you do it. So try something, hit play, see what it looks like. If you don't like it, adjust it over here. Hit play again, see if you like that. That's how I did it. Okay, so that's our first step. After that, you're ready to start actually playing the game or making it play the game. So the next page of your packet, if you flip the page, playing the game gives an overview. You know, move left, enter one, stay put, enter two, etc., and gives you a couple examples of what could happen. That's what I showed you at the beginning of the video. So if you forget what the game is supposed to actually do, you can read this section over again. Here's kind of your next big task. The following steps need to be accomplished to play the game. You've got to print the original game status, so you've got to do print game. As long as the player has more turns, we want to do these things. We want to ask the player for their next move. We want to actually move them to the appropriate column. Catch the appropriate value means, like, if I'm going to stay here in my game up above, I would catch the 500 in the player points. That's what catch the appropriate value means. Update the board. That's where I do my shift. So I'm going to have to shift the two rows downwards and make a new top line. Print the current game status. Well, after you shift the board, you're just printing it again after it's been shifted. And all that's going to keep happening as long as you have more turns. So hopefully in your head you're thinking, hmm, what kind of loop could I use to put all this stuff in that's going to keep going as long as I have turns? Hmm. Okay. And then at the end, once the turns are done, we're just going to print game. In order to make that happen, you need to fill in play game, move and catch, and update board. Those are three more empty methods in the drop game that Java file. We've got play game, we've got move and catch, and we've got update board. Those are the last three you have to write, and each of them again come with a description of what's supposed to happen. After you've got those written and you're ready to test your game, your third step to do because you can't test those to work until you update the driver. Once you're done with all of your code, you're going to go to your driver and you're going to delete out what's there and put these three lines instead. So I'm literally saying go to the driver, you'll delete all these three, those are gone, and in place of them, you're just going to write those three things. Okay? Once you've got it all working, play the game once. I need the drop game.java file. I don't need the driver because there's really not much in there, nothing that you're writing to new on your own, and your output from that one game. Submit those two things to Google Classroom by the due date, and you're good to go. Now, since this is a little different than past programs you've done, you technically know enough code to do this. Obviously, I'll help you if you have questions. If you get stuck or need a nudge on how to get started, just raise your hand and let me know. Um, but you don't need a hierarchy chart. You should be going right to the computers and working for this one. If you finish, there's a couple bonuses you can look at. So after you submit, if you want to work on this bonus, I'm not even going to read through it right now, but just know that it's here. It's not really a lot of coding you have to do. It's mainly thinking about the game and writing a paragraph, thinking if there's a better way to make the game better. So if that's something you want to do, that would count as a bonus point. And I would use that as the same as like a bonus program. So you get one point added onto your overall grade for the quarter. This last thing is just for fun. Now, we haven't done any real work with GUI, um, graphic user interfaces, this year other than Carol. So it's basically how to make it look pretty with pictures. But if you wanted to play the game using the graphical user interface, what you have to do is you have to make two new classes. You're just going to make one called drop game GUI driver and one game called drop game GUI. You're going to go back to the classroom. I have those files in here too, so just like before, you can copy and paste those in. You'll copy that into your new folder or new uh, Java file that you make. And you really don't have to do anything other than copy and paste what I've given you because once you do that, if I go back to here, I can show you. it should work with your code that you've written already. So it's been already kind of preloaded. Um, GUI is not something we're teaching, but 
if you're interested in seeing what that would do, here's the drop game GUI file. So I'm going to run that. So run this. It still does drop game, but it actually gives you a board. So if I want to move left to get that 300, I would hit left and get 300. If I want to stay, I would click stay and I'd get the 400. And you can see it's actually running your program behind it, but it's also running this GUI version. And it works the same way. You can keep staying. It counts your turns down. Eventually, you'll get down to zero turns left, and it says game over. I earned 2,500 points. If you decide to do that, it's kind of just a fun thing for you to do. You're not really learning anything by doing it. That'll give you a couple extra points on your program if you show me that you got that working too. If you're interested, you can always go to the GUI driver. Mainly the GUI file is what you really want to see. If you're interested to see how those panels get made and whatnot, and what colors I can choose and whatnot, you can mess around with this a little bit if you want to just look at it on your own. That's nothing formal. All right, so I think that's it. Hopefully that gave you a good overview of the program and you're ready to get started. As always, come ask me if you've got any questions. Good luck.